I think a lot of times people think that being a content creator is kind of like being the starving artist. Like it's today's version of being a starving artist that you can make money, but it's not great money or you can get there, but it might be a long way off. And I'm here to tell you that that is not true. You can make a million dollars a year if you want to as a creator. Absolutely. And I'm going to show you exactly how you do that because we don't want starving creators around here. We want people who are freaking thriving. We want creators who make this a job and make the world a better place because of how much money they make. That's what we want. Hey, howdy, hey, y'all, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jessica Stansberry. And this channel is full of tech tips, system tutorials, marketing advice, entrepreneurship and creator tips. So if that sounds like something you are into, hit the subscribe button below. Okay, so inevitably, y'all know this, inevitably, when I talk about making money as a creator or making money from anything, there's gonna be people who are like, that's not possible. It is freaking possible. There are people doing it every day. But the difference in someone being a creator and making starving artists money and being a creator and making really freaking good money is mindset. Now that sounds fluffy, but hang with me. I promise I'm getting somewhere. I've talked about this for years. I have for years said that business owners and creators need to merge their mindsets. And that is where the perfect balance of being a creator comes to play. Because most creators start on a platform to just be a YouTuber or just be a TikToker or just be an Instagrammer or an influencer in some format. And that's how they're viewing the business model as a whole. It's like, it's my whole job to create content and I am going to make money directly because I create content from sponsorships and from AdSense or creator funds, which is what most people think of when they think of being a creator is like, that's the way you make money is from AdSense here on YouTube, from sponsorships, from creator funds on things like TikTok. But that's literally probably the smallest slice of the pie. Honest to Pete. And so if you can think like a business owner, if you as a creator can think like a business owner, you'll win this game. You will get to a million dollars a year. You will be that person who makes the really good money when all these other people aren't. So step number one here in this like business model of being a creator who actually makes good money is to actually have the mindset of a business owner, not just a creator. Now, I think this can be really hard sometimes because people get like thrown into <laughs> the creator role. Like I think of somebody like Elise Myers. Elise Myers started putting out TikToks, you know, was just doing it for fun. And then she had her taco date story go viral. And from there, she was like mega huge. And she has like had to keep up with the demand of what that means, right? Now she has diversified her platforms and she is doing different things. But a lot of times that happens. Like that is what happens to most creators who kind of blow up is they blow up unexpectedly and they don't really know what to do with that. Not saying Elise doesn't. That's not what I mean at all because I really don't know what she's doing with her business. But in that kind of format, a lot of people then don't know what to do with that type of exposure. So think like a business owner. Put your business owner hat on. And if you don't know what I mean by that, keep listening. But First and foremost, it's to not think like a creator and that just creating content is all you're good for or that that's all you need to do to make money or that the only ways you're gonna make money are the traditional creator paths of sponsorships and money from the platforms. Put on your business owner hat and get creative. You're a creator after all. Now, what that really means, what that really comes down to is having multiple streams of income. Here's the thing. We are in this like amazing, amazing world right now where audience is currency, where, you know, like if you have a large audience, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. Honestly, you can sell what you want to sell. You can get money in the ways you want to get money. You can have clout to do things like write books or speak on stages. So audience growth, having a large audience is currency. And not to say that that's everything, but it's a really big piece of the pie. So if you can think about your audience as, first of all, your supporters and these awesome people in your community, yes, 
because if you lose sight of that, none of the rest of this is going to work anyway, because they'll see right through it. But think of your audience as dollars, because that's exactly how a business owner would think of it. So if someone is getting on YouTube, and by the way, I'm saying this from experience because I got on YouTube to be a business owner who had a YouTube channel, not to be a YouTuber. And after I got on the platform, I realized how much I love YouTube and I'm kind of in a like hybrid place right now, which I think is a good thing. But when you talk to a business owner who is creating content to grow their business, that's literally what they're doing is, you know, if I have a thousand people on Instagram, and I can convert 1% of those to a sale for this thing, I can make this much money. Like that's what the marketer in them is doing. And so you as a creator really need to think through that too. And all of that comes down to having multiple streams of income, not just those standard creator streams that everybody talks about or thinks about. So what does that look like? Well, okay, multiple streams of income. Let's think about this. What can we have? Obviously we can have AdSense or some type of creator fund. Like I said, here on YouTube, that is AdSense. Once you get to a certain point, YouTube is like, hey, you can put ads on your videos now and we will give you 55% of what we make from those ads. And you'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you. And it'll be a little tiny amount at first, but it could grow because I promise it does. And a lot of other platforms have similar things in place. They just don't pay near as well as YouTube does. So like TikTok has the creator fund, Instagram has like reels, bonuses, and all of this stuff. But YouTube is definitely king there. However, you can totally make money with the platform paying you. That's stream of income number one. Now, again, we're gonna hit up sponsorships right here just, just real quickly because that's gonna be the second thing that comes to your mind when you're thinking about how to make money as a creator. So yes, absolutely, you can make money taking on sponsored deals, taking on sponsorships, getting people to sponsor your videos. That is a solid stream of income. And depending on how large your audience is, that could be a really solid stream of income. But remember, I said we were gonna think outside the box and that's the box. So now we're going outside of it. So this next one is just slightly out of the box because I do think that some creators think of this, but it's not always like, the first thought because I watch creators completely ignore this when it's something really easy that they can do. So third stream of income here for creators should be affiliate marketing. Now I talk a lot about affiliate marketing on my channel. I have a course about affiliate marketing. I will link it below, but affiliate marketing is a really, really solid strategy to just kind of bank on of all the other things you're doing. Because inevitably as a creator, you're talking about things or telling people about things or sharing things with your audience that they want to learn more about. So why not have affiliate links instead of just sharing a thing, you can then make money from sharing the thing you were going to share anyway. Now, the last part of this list are the actual things that I think are outside the box that most creators do not think about. So I'm going to get to those next. But before I do, hit me with a comment below to let me know that you're loving this content and say, my content brings all the dollars to the yard. Okay. My content brings all the dollars to the yard. Hit me below in the comments with that comment because I want to blow up my comment section with y'all saying that so that I know that y'all are like, oh my gosh. I still want to do this. Okay, next thing, again, is less out of the box than some of the others, but more out of the box than affiliate marketing because I do think that creators tend to go this path more than they're going to go some of these others we're going to talk about because they've seen it done so much, and that is physical products slash merch. So as a creator, if you have a catchphrase or something you say a lot or like a signature like graphic or a thing that you know your audience is going to resonate with and want to wear or, you know, whatever, then you absolutely should create merch to help them do that and help them support you, but also help them show that they're a member of your community out in the world. Okay, listen, I'm going to show you this little tiny gavel because it's the only thing I have in my office from her box. But my girl, Emily D. Baker, she just sent me a promo box like a month and a half ago. And she calls her community Law Nerds, which I love. Uh, and she had a sticker in there that said Law Nerds. She had a tumbler, like a cup with a straw that said Law Nerd. She had these little gavels, like, there we go. How freaking cute is that? She had all this fun merch. And now she sent it to me as a promo box, but she could totally sell all that. And she does sell Law Nerd merch. 
So creators do tend to go this path, but I think sometimes people think that they need this massive audience to sell merch, and that's not true. You can use services like Printify or Spreadshop, which are print-on-demand services, to make your own merch and have people go on and purchase and you not have to do anything. They just make it for you and ship it and then you get a cut of the sale. But you can also make it harder and take more money by having it mass produced. So totally up to you on how you do that, but merch is a great way to diversify that income. All right, now we're getting into the like real out of the box things that I know people don't think about. And we're gonna go first with digital products. Y'all hear me talk a lot about digital products on this channel. These can be anything from Google Docs that will help your people to worksheets and workbooks to ebooks to downloadable art, fonts, digital planners, toolkits that, you know, give people lots of tools to do the things. Digital products have a ton, like a wide variety of things you can fit into that bucket. And I have a ton of videos here on my channel about digital products, so I'll make sure they're linked below. But digital products are a really great way to make money passive money as a creator because your audience wants to either purchase the things that they see you doing or learn the things that they see you doing and digital products are a great way to do that example peter mckinnon i love peter mckinnon i will watch any video peter mckinnon puts on the internet even though i could give two flying farts about his truck or his one wheel or the coffee he drinks I don't, I don't care. And that's really all he creates content about. <laughs> Not really, I'm joking. But I love Peter McKinnon. He's just awesome. And so he sells presets for Photoshop. He sells LUTs. I think he does. I may be wrong. But LUTs for video editing. So you can get his same kind of style. Because he would really be missing out if he has this huge audience who wants to edit photos like Peter McKinnon, who wants to edit videos like Peter McKinnon, and he didn't give them the digital tools to do that. Now, kind of on that same note, but a little bit different, and this one I know that content creators look over all the time, and that is courses. If you have something in here that your audience wants to know about, create a course about it. Like, it's not that hard. I literally just filmed an entire course yesterday. Filmed it all, every module, like every last one. I had done the slide decks and obviously planned out the course and what I was gonna talk about a few weeks ago, but I filmed the entire course in one day. Now, that's not always the case. This was a shorter, lower cost course, but if you have knowledge up here, that your people want to know about, and you will know that by the kind of content that resonates with them most, that gets the most views, that gets the most comments, etc. then bottle it up and put it in a course and sell it. You know, that's how YouTube Rockstars came to be. That's how all my courses have come to be, but YouTube Rockstars is a great example. So I had been teaching courses on digital products and systems and that kind of thing. And then I actually started growing on YouTube and people saw me going from, you know, no YouTube subscribers to thousands of YouTube subscribers and started asking me like, how are you doing that? I would love to do that. How did you do it? Can you share your tricks? Can you share your tips? And so about a year into my journey, I created my first signature course called YouTube Rockstars, where I teach people how to actually do the thing I've done how to get on YouTube, how to grow on YouTube, how to be successful on YouTube, how to do everything right on YouTube. And I sell that as a course. Same thing with my newest course, Affiliate Marketing Mastery. I have always wanted to create an affiliate marketing course, but it's one of those things that I've always just kind of put on the back burner because it's definitely a shorter course. Like there's only so much you can say about affiliate marketing before people are like, I get it. Um, it's not as in depth as something like growing on YouTube. So I've just kind of put it off, but y'all were asking constantly, well, how do I do this? What do I do with this? Why is this this way? What should I do? Blah, blah, blah. So I bottled it up and I put it in a course. And yes, I am in like an education model of YouTube right? Like I teach things here on the platform or I demonstrate things or I show behind the scenes of things, but you can do this with anything. I have a friend, her name's Kendra Hennessy, and she owned a house cleaning company for years and years. And when I met her, she was just starting her online content platform called Mother Like a Boss. And in this platform, she teaches moms how to create systems and processes around keeping their house clean and organizing and the things that stress us moms out, right? And she has made a very successful living, very successful living, selling courses to help moms 
do just that. So think outside the box. You can create a course I promise. All right, last but not least, definitely not least, but probably the one that creators look over the most, honestly, and that is coaching and consulting. Now, this can look very different depending on what your type of content creation is. But again, on the side of courses, like where people want your knowledge, they want your courses, they want, you know, you to teach them the things. There are also people who want hands-on help with things. There are also companies who would love to know your tips and tricks to teach their marketing company. There are companies who would love to know your tips and tricks to teach their teams or whatever, like depending on what your niche is but you can consult and coach just as easily as you can create a course and probably sometimes easier. It just takes more of you with each sale, but you can charge more. So one of my favorite niches to watch personally on YouTube is the tech niche. I love tech and I love, you know, watching about the new iPhone or the new computer or whatever. And so I think of somebody like I Justine, like she's not teaching tech to people. She is demonstrating it and reviewing it and giving her opinions on it. But there very well may be two scenarios that happen or three or four where a company comes to her and they're like, Hey, we have seen the awesome job you do on YouTube. Can you come teach our marketing team what you know? Absolutely. Give me $20,000 or more and I'll do that. The other option is a company comes to her and they're like, Hey, we would love for you to consult with our tech team on what tech items we need to do X, Y, and Z in our company more efficiently. She can be like, yes, please sign me up. So it doesn't matter what niche you're in, even if you're in like a lifestyle niche. So I recently found Julia K. Christ, I think is how you say her name. And she's like not my age at all. She's in college and like, you know, 10 years, 15 years whatever, younger than me, but I've been loving her content. And she is really like in a lifestyle niche. Like the video she put out today, I'm looking at it is college move-in day, 2022. The one before that productive day in my life. Uh, the one before that I hosted my own Apple session for today. So there you go. That right there can show you how she can consult. She got paid to go and teach a class for Apple, for people who are similar to her because of the content she creates on the internet. So there are so many options when it comes to having multiple streams of income. But if you are a creator who's like, I want to make more money, I want to make good money as a creator, which you should be, put on your business hat and come up with all the different ways that you can make money in multiple streams of income. All right, that's all folks. Bye.